الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all the previous messengers including Moses, Jesus David, Solomon, Dawood alayhi salatu was salam, Ibrahim, and all his children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all, and may he make us from amongst those who can benefit from the lives of the prophets, and may he make us realize and understand the gift that we have being the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the family, the household of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and at the same time, all his companions, and all those who struggled and strove through the years in a way that today the deen is with us. Brothers and sisters in Islam, indeed it brings a smile to the face to see the faces that are smiling, mashallah. And when I said that, I see more faces smiling, alhamdulillah. That's the impact of the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You smile and others smile. It is a sunnah. It is a rewarding or rewardable deed. Something that we take for granted. A lot of the times there are mu'mineen and sometimes people who are quite conscious about their link with Allah, but they forget to smile. And yet that is one of the sunan, one of the traditions or ways of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that really has such an impact on humanity at large, that it breaks a lot of ice. It automatically creates a link and a bond of humanity to start with. And thereafter, it propagates the deen without a statement. Subhanallah. I have seen it, and I'm sure you have as well. And if you haven't yet seen it, then you will see it. Subhanallah. You've got teeth. Don't worry whether they're straight or not. Mine are not that straight. But nobody notices. Subhanallah. It's just you. When you look into the mirror and you say, okay, that tooth is this way, so you... <laughs> Don't worry, smile, give it broad. We all have something wrong with our teeth. Allahu Akbar. Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What a great impact. And I decided to start with this because we are speaking of the impact of the character of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's important to know his teachings have such a great impact. And today, inshallah, we will spend the next 45 minutes by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going through some of the impact that really people felt around Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And not only that, but those who follow his example, the impact they create by following that example is such that wallahi, it leaves behind a warmth in the heart of anyone who interacts with them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we heard yesterday, I had made mention of how he spoke to his wife Khadija binti Khuwaylid radiallahu anha when he received revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What type of a person was he before revelation? Before revelation. He was an honest, upright man. We heard that he was a sadiqul amin. So much so that he left such a big impact upon a female who was older than him, whom he worked for or did some business dealings on behalf of. And this was Khadija. If you know the history, and I'm sure we as Muslimin would definitely know it, when he was sent to Asham, the Syrian region, the Palestinian Syrian region, with trade for Khadija, he came back with every single what we would term penny accounted for. Every little droplet was accounted for. And the trade was done in such a way that the profit was far greater than when anyone else did the same. Subhanallah. He was honest. He, his dealings were such that he was considerate of the buyer when he was selling and considerate or he, when he bought himself he knew he had to give that man a slight bit of a profit and at the same time bargain in a way that he would earn and gain for this particular person he was working for. Honesty. And as a result, 
this woman who was much older, who had been previously married, decided to take a chance. What was the chance? I'm sorry to call it take a chance, but in today's world, it would be. Allahu Akbar. Wow, young man, extremely good looking. Subhanallah, what honesty, what uprightness, what a person, his speech, no vulgar words. This was before Nubuwa, before prophethood. No vulgar words. He does not drink. He does not sit around people who have bad habits. Look at the character of Muhammad Sallallahu You read about him before prophethood. He never took part in anything that would have placed a scratch on his slate. Subhanallah. He did not mix or associate with bad people. Not at all. So this was noticed. And it was noticed by everyone. And this lady says, you know what? I think it would be good for me to put forth a little proposal of marriage through someone. And that's exactly what happened. You know, today if you had a 25-year-old, subhanallah, and an upright person, never married before, and, uh, you know, so honest, uh, business, a person who's really uh, good character and conduct, and you have a woman previously married, uh, children involved, and so on, who's much, much 15 years older perhaps, uh, I think it wouldn't be really in the mind of such a female or a sister to even try their luck. I didn't I say that moments ago? To even try their luck. But this was something divine. The impact was such that she said, let me put this forth. Do you know what happened? It came through. Allahu Akbar. He accepted it. Why? That's the impact of his character. He married based on goodness, piety, uprightness. He too noticed the uprightness in Khadija binti Khawailid radiallahu anha. Amazing. And people go around saying, oh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa married because of this and that. Na'udhu billah, mentioning some bad points. No, look at what he did. In the prime of his life, when he was a man, his first marriage, take a look at how it worked and what happened. Do you call this man a womanizer? Allahu Akbar, astaghfirullah. May Allah protect us all from such blaspheme. And he chose someone who really brought about a lot of comfort in his life. Look at the choice. Brothers and sisters, how do you choose your spouse? People are looking at me. I think a lot of them are already married. <laughs> Mashallah, you've chosen inshallah. But be a means of comfort for one another. Getting back to the impact made, look at it. It was such that thereafter, subhanallah, this Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had children from the same female, subhanallah. And he treated them, what we would say, like gold. Amazing, you know, going now into Nubuwa, I just, I'm just fast forwarding it a little bit. His grandchildren, it is reported that on one occasion he kissed one of his grandsons. And nearby was a certain man, Al-Aqra ibn Habis, a certain man, and he says, you kiss this little child. How can you kiss your child? You kiss this grandchild. Because at that time, they did not used to show that affection to the children. The girls were looked down upon because they were considered a sex or a gender that was not meant to be something that was a disgrace to the people. To this day, you have some people across the, the globe, when they are told of a female, they're upset. You know, you're having a female, a girl. Wallahi, thank Allah. Smile, mashallah. I have four daughters and two sons. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless those without children, with children. And may He bless those who have sons with daughters. And those with daughters, with sons. It is Allah, and He chooses, He decides. Allahu Akbar. But at the same time, He looks and He says, he asks, or in fact, this man says, I have 10 sons or 10 little children. I've never kissed any one of them. You know what he says? Man la yarham, la yurham. Whoever does not show mercy will not be shown mercy. Powerful words. Whoever does not show mercy shall not be shown mercy. That means a kiss on the forehead or the cheeks or on this little child or grandchild of yours is a sign of mercy. Have you understood it? It's a sign of mercy upon your child. How many of us are prepared to kiss our children, our grandchildren, to hug them, to embrace them? They need it, subhanallah. Today, psychologists and PhD holders, we talk about them again today, mashallah. They, they would tell you how important it is to embrace the child, 
to hug them, to give them the feeling of belonging. Whereas the impact of the character of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam already has placed that within us. If we are following the sunnah, we would be from amongst those who have achieved this a long, long time ago. Our children feel the sense of belonging. Today you have dad and dad don't want to hug. He don't want to kiss, let alone his children, even his wife. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us. Allahu Akbar. See everyone smiling here. Why? People think now I'm old. Come on, I hugged you when I was 20. We're now 50. That's when it all starts. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and may, may he make it easy for us. This is the beauty of Islam. Look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he was granted nubuwa, it did not make him arrogant at all. Imagine if you were told, or if a person, just imagine, because it's not going to happen. If a person was told that, you know what, you are chosen by Allah to be a messenger of Allah, the most loved of Allah, the highest of creatures or creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, etc., etc. What do you think would be the status of one of us if we were told that? I don't even want to begin to go into that direction. You know, if a person is appointed a king or a leader or a president or an MP or a CEO of a big, oh, you know, company, it automatically, automatically sometimes with certain people makes them develop a chip on their shoulders. You know, they start walking. It's me, you know, I'm the boss, you know. Look at them. Whereas Muhammad sallallahu knew this and he knew much more. And he knew how they treated him in Mecca. And yet he did not respond or retaliate in the same way. He didn't. He responded with kindness, with goodness. He responded with mercy. And this is why Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you except as a means of mercy for the worlds, for mankind and jinn kind. For creation at large, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of this mercy. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks of how he has been sent in order to confirm and complete the pure and good character and conduct, to teach it, to practice it. And he was one whom, when he taught something, he practiced upon it so that it could be, it could leave or create such an impact that anyone who wanted a perfect life. All they needed to do was to just follow this particular life. That's why Allah says in the Quran, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ Allahu Akbar. Indeed, for you, in the life of Muhammad sallallahu is a, a definite example, something to follow, to emulate. For who? For those who are 